Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a first impressions video with the Clarity Cosmetics Cobra Palette. As you guys can tell from the packaging, I'm sure this is right up my alley as far as color story goes. So if you guys are interested in seeing swatches, this eye look, and hearing my first impression thoughts, then just keep watching. If you guys are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Karen Harris. I like to film tan girl friendly makeup videos here on YouTube. When I first got on YouTube, I had such a hard time finding swatches, eyeshadow looks, and just makeup content in general from people with my skin tone. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and start up a YouTube channel. And here we are like 10 years later, I can't even believe it. But if that sounds like something you're interested in, highly recommend subscribing, turning on that bell. I do post almost every day, so you do get quite a bit of content from me and I would hate for you to miss it. And now let's go ahead and talk about the new palette from Clarity. Okay, so I'm so excited about this palette. Again, I talked about kind of my shopping experience and some of my thoughts on this brand while I was doing my makeup, so I will save all of that for that moment in time, but the packaging's very nice. It kind of gives me Give Me Glow vibes, and I believe Give Me Glow is also based in Texas and so is Clarity. Not that that would matter, but if you guys are wondering like what does this feel like? It feels very much like a Give Me Glow palette if you guys have shopped the Give Me Glow website. So this is what the inside looks like. There are eight beautiful shades, four shimmers, and four mattes. And I will go ahead and overlay the swatches for you guys just so you can see. I think the swatches are so beautiful. This is such a beautiful color story, so that's why I did end up grabbing this palette. And then on the sleeve back here, it does say this is a 12 month shelf life, cruelty free. This palette is handmade by Clarity Cosmetics in Groves, Texas, USA. So all of the shadow ingredients are listed on the back in case you guys are allergic to certain things. And then just so you guys know, I did pay $36 for the palette and then shipping was $7.95 and then taxes in Texas were $1.80. So I paid a total of $45.75 for this palette, which I feel like sets it at a mid-range price point. So yeah, overall, I am super happy with this purchase. So let's go ahead and see how I created this makeup look. Hey guys, so it's time to film the demo portion of the video with the Cobra palette. I did swatch this already, so you've seen the close-ups and the color story looks very promising so my expectations are very high right now i'm hoping i don't feel disappointed um <laughs> but yeah i'm excited so i'm gonna go into the shade hysterical which is this beautiful olive green and i have this small tapered blending brush from sigma it's the e45 i really like this brush because it's small and it's tapered and it's great for crease work and i think i'm gonna try and use a few different shades matte shades and this is my first time trying Clarity Cosmetics. I feel like the reputation of this brand already supersedes it so I'm nervous. I feel like I was so worried because I bought the So Memorizing palette and my palette came with a few shades broken and there was a lot of oil seeping and I reached out through their email and they said they could replace the shades or I could send the palette back for a refund. And honestly, I opted to go with the refund option because once I saw the palette in person, I thought the shades, the metallics look really pretty, but the mattes looked very light. And so for the price point, I was like, you know what, let me just send it back. Just learn from my first time ordering and just wait for a different palette that would be more up my alley. So I'm really glad I did that because I think this color story is definitely more up my alley. But then when I posted that this palette had launched, I was nervous again because there was mixed reviews on the palette and the brand. And also I had mentioned in a, I think one of my new makeup releases videos that they had an option for a tip which I'd never seen, but then some of you had said that you've noticed that other indie brands are also requesting tips, which I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys think of tips? I think a lot of you had kind of just said the same thing as me, is like, why would I tip 
if I'm already paying for the palette. <laughs> I don't really get it. But anyway, that color built up really nicely. Now I am debating, do I go in with bow and arrow or don't hiss me off? Um, I think I'm going to go into bow and arrow. This is such a pretty green color. And I know the last eyeshadow palette I used on my channel is also like a green blue look, but you guys know that's what I like. And <laughs> I got this palette in like two days ago, so I'm like already behind on filming, but I am trying to do some like more chatty less like eyeshadow palette videos. So if you guys have any ideas of things that you want to see me do, let me know. I did film a favorites video just of like random products that I use all the time that I don't talk about in every single video, but behind the scenes, that's kind of what I'm using. So hopefully you guys will check that out. If you didn't see it, maybe you missed it in your subscription feed. Um, but um, it was really fun to do something like that. Just like showing you guys favorites and chatting about like some of my Holy Grail products. I think I'm also going to do the my makeup history tag started by Lisa J here on YouTube and then I saw Morgan Turner um, also created a tag with a I think another creator named Patty Alonzo called uh, the perfect makeup or something like that my perfect makeup tag so I do plan on filming those I filmed a foundation declutter which I'm so excited about Usually I feel like people wait until the end of the year to film declutter videos, but I'm realizing that this year is going to be different for me because my baby is due in November, so I don't think I'm going to I don't think I'm going to do vlogmas this year. I don't think I'm going to have the time. And like, yes, I could pre-film, but honestly, I think I might just take some time off of YouTube. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing yet. I'm just winging it. We'll see how it goes. Um, I do know that like YouTube is my happy place and I definitely don't plan on taking like a big break. Um, but I just feel like there's going to be a lot happening because my parents are moving. We got um, confirmation that the U.S. Embassy in Sri Lanka received their paperwork. So they're going to have their immigration interviews soon and... It's going to be a wild end of 2021. I can't believe it. Anyway, those two shades are so beautiful. I don't think I'm going to darken up the outer corners anymore. Um, so I think I'm just going to take the easy way out and go in with Mamba and uh, Pi. <laughs> That's cute. The shade name is Pi, P-I-E dash Ton, T-H-O-N. That's a cute name. I actually hate snakes, I will say. I know some people really hate spiders. I will take a spider any day over a snake. I think snakes are disgusting. I grew up on an island. I still remember once we had a cobra in our backyard. It was very early in the morning and you could hear it hissing because we had a dog that was barking at it and the cobra was hissing. So then my parents had to go get our dog out of our backyard so the cobra wouldn't sting it. And then this freaking cobra literally found a pipe, like a drainage pipe that we have that went from our front yard to our backyard. So the water drained and it crawled through the pipe and got into our front yard. And then our dog was barking again. So that happened. Um, it was a giant cobra. I never saw it. Oh my God. But I still remember like how... I don't want to say traumatizing because I feel like that's a big word, but it was really terrifying as a kid because you could hear it hissing and you know cobras are poisonous. So I was just so scared that it was going to sting my family or my parents or something. So then they managed to trap it in the pipe, like um, block it off on two sides. And my parents tried to call like the zoo to see if they would come like capture it because they said it was like a beautiful cobra that they didn't want to kill um sorry if that's triggering but 
honestly, it's, it's a, it's a danger. Like we lived in a residential neighborhood. There was nowhere for the snake to go. And so in the morning they had to like take care of it. But, oh my gosh. So I hate snakes. I hate snakes. I hate snakes so, so much. They're so gross. They're so slithery. They're so scary. The fact that they're poisonous, like freaks me out. Like you can definitely die from a cobra bite. So, oh my God, I was so nervous that my dad was gonna get stung or my mom or the dog or that somebody was gonna die. And so that was very, that was very traumatic as a child for me. So I hate snakes <laughs> is the short version of that story. Anyway, this is a pretty color. It's a nice olive green. I'm just spraying my brush because I want it to be nice and opaque. And this is a little more colorful than what I would do for my boutique job, but honestly, I really wanted to play with this palette today, so that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to go into Python. I'm just going to flip the brush around. Oh, such a pretty color. Spray it. The shimmers are nice. They're kind of getting like hard pan. Um, when I use the brush to pick them up. And they're not like super shimmery. So I don't know how to feel about that. Like I was expecting, I mean, I guess I could use my finger. Yeah, finger application seems to be the way to go what the heck look at the color like when i use my finger the color just came alive that's wild so i guess i'm gonna have to do that with that olive shade too i don't love to use my finger when i do my makeup though like it's not the end of the world but yeah that finger application really Change the game there. Wow, I'm shocked. <laughs> okay, perfect. Not a lot of fallout. The shades work really well. I only use four colors. There's four more shades, so I use just the top row here. But that was really promising. I'm a little less nervous to recommend Clarity now that I've tried one of the palettes. So I'm gonna clean up my under eye finish up the rest of my face and I will be right back to tell you guys my first impression thoughts on this palette. Okay guys, so here is the final look. Obviously, you already know what it looks like, but I always end up saying that I'm trying to train my brain to say something else instead. But anyway, just so you guys know, I do have a foundation declutter coming, so I'm very excited to share that with you guys because let me tell you, I hadn't decluttered my foundation drawer in a hot second, and so I think it'll be fun for you guys to see. That being said, there are some foundations that are kind of in purgatory, and I'm really trying to make an effort this time to go through said purgatory items and decide if I'm going to keep them or not. And one of the things I used on my face is a foundation that is in purgatory. This is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. And I have the shade Syracuse. Now, as soon as I put this on, I remember why I don't like this foundation. It is very matte and it is kind of hard for me to blend. I think if I had oily skin, I would really like this, which is honestly why I ended up picking this up because my friend Heather Austin loves this foundation. I think she's already panned this and she has very oily skin, so I can totally see this working on oily skin girls. And I don't know, for me, it just feels like it was very stiff and it's very matte. So I don't know how I feel about it. I think it looks fine on camera. We'll have to see. I did see it in artificial light in the mirror while I was doing my hair and I was like, well, it looks good. Like it doesn't look bad, but I'm curious to see how it wears through the day. And honestly, it does feel a little heavy on my face. And I did put a little bit extra on too because I wanted to make sure that it was like blended well because I am going to go to work after this and I don't want to be like, one part, you know, one skin tone and then a different skin tone on my neck. So I just want to mention that I have like a bit of a project going on with some of these foundations that I've been holding on to. I'm going to test them out on different days and then I will include them in videos just so you guys know like my final thoughts and stuff like that. But the foundation declutter 
should be up this weekend, so please stay tuned for that. And then I also used a Odin's Eye lipstick because I love these. And I used my favorite shade. This is Ripe Papaya. You guys know how much I love a rusty colored liquid lipstick. I have so many different formulas in this shade just because I love a shade like this. So just wanted to tell you guys that. I also am going to test the Glam Light icing base because I've been so loyal to the Juvia's Place one the last couple of months. So I'm finally going to wear this a few times and figure out my thoughts on that. And then I did do a wing liner because my PR package from Teresa is Dead and Lethal Cosmetics finally came. So I did use Ectoplasm to create a wing liner on my upper lash. And then I used the two eyeliners from the ColourPop Lush Life collection. So I'm wearing the shade A Glow on the inner corner. And then this green is so pretty in the shade Canopy on the outer half of my waterline and for highlighter I use the Mario Honey highlighter which I've been loving recently. I just think it's so natural and such a beautiful glow and since I've been going through my foundations I was like let me switch up my blush like I feel like I've been using all the new blushes I've been trying and so I did pull out Buzzkill from Melt Cosmetics because I hadn't used this in a while so that is the blush I have on today. So I just like to tell you guys what is on my face in case you guys are curious and half the time I forget so I figured I'd just mention it so you guys know. Anyway back to the Clarity palette. So overall I feel like I kind of told you guys why I was a little bit worried about purchasing from this brand. I got so excited when I saw the color story that I didn't really stop to think and I didn't have the best experience with my original purchase as far as just how the palette looked when I received it. Customer service and everything was fine. Everything turned out great so I have no complaints there but I was a little bit nervous because I have heard things about like their mats not being very buildable and things like that which I could totally see but maybe they've taken all that constructive feedback and made changes. I don't know. But personally, with the four shades I used, I didn't have a problem. I really like this look. It's so pretty. These colors are right up my alley. So I'm very, very excited to have this in my collection. And so far, the palette gets two thumbs up from me. So I will keep you guys posted in my July rankings video on where this palette ends up. But... Oh my gosh, you guys know I love a good green blue eyeshadow palette, so I'm very happy with the palette, very happy with my purchase. Let me know, did you guys pick up this palette or did you pass on it? What do you guys think of the swatches? You know I love chatting to you in my comment section. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I will see you in my next video tomorrow. Bye guys!